Today's video, we're doing part one of converting this old cargo trailer into a DIY mobile hunting rig. So stay tuned. My name is Clint Campbell, and if you're not familiar with the channel, I run the Truth from the Stand Deer Hunting Podcast, where we talk all about deer hunting tricks, tips, and tactics. And today, we're talking about part number one of converting this cargo trailer into a DIY mobile hunting rig. This will be a two-part series, so be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification to be sure to get all the upcoming videos and podcasts. All right, day one of trailer conversion. It's a six by 10 box trailer. I affectionately refer to it as the Mav Bomber. It's actually kind of purple. Um, it was actually my grandfather's, uh, so I picked it up uh, from a family member, pretty cheap. Um, been wanting to convert a trailer for out-of-state public land hunts, so I um, decided to pick this one up. And i uh, going to start tearing stuff out of it and uh, begin the build-out process, so it should be, uh, should be fun and interesting. Bring you guys along for the ride. All right, so we got all the shelving out of the uh, of the trailer. Got the carpet out, and noticed here there's a little bit some water damage there, and then there's just a little bit of water damage back here. I looked on the roof, and it seems like where the seams are, <clears throat> the sealant is, is has kind of worn out. So what I'll probably end up doing is kind of re-caulking and sealing those seams. And I'm either going to take out this last board here and replace it, or I'll just cut out the part that's water damaged and replace that section. So not too bad. I think the one thing though is that you know, when I was looking at this, I was planning to pull all the panels off to put insulation in. But what I noticed was is that there's bolts on the inside there's bolts on the inside that kind of run from the inside to the out that are holding on the fenders and a lot of the hardware like the hinges and the door handles and stuff like that <clears throat> and they're just so rusted that I don't think there's any way I'm going to be able to get them off and I'm afraid if I do I may end up breaking them so I think what I'm going to do and it's probably not ideal but this is again a hunting rig so it's not going to doesn't necessarily need to be perfect it needs to be functional and so I'm probably just going to adhere my insulation to this wall because if you take this this piece of insulation I had laying around the house here like that's pretty hard and I'm gonna I'm planning to put some like peel and stick wall covering on top of it that unless you really are intending to put a hole in it you're not gonna damage it so rather than try to Pull all this hardware off and risk breaking something and have being in being in more trouble than uh, than I'd like to be. I think I'm just going to kind of do this, put this panel, put these pan these uh, insulation panels up against the wood itself, and adhere it with an adhesive, and then do the peel and stick over top of that, and I should be good. I'll probably put some type of membrane down on the floor, um, just to kind of uh, uh, you know reduce any moisture on the floor. Um, and then I am going to insulate the floor too, I believe, um, and then put peel and stick floor down on that too. So the other thing that I recognized too was that the way these walls are built, you know, it's six foot by six foot, but on the inside there's this bracket that comes off, you know, maybe two inches on each side. So you're really losing two inches on each side on the inside of the trailer, and which makes it about five nine. And I was going to put the bunk beds across the back but I don't think that's gonna work now because one I would probably be the only person able to sleep in the bunk beds because I'm short enough uh, but any of my buddies that might want to come with me that are you know six foot plus aren't gonna be able to fit so that was kind of a bummer um, so what I'm gonna end up doing is actually just getting some bunk beds uh, that kind of stack on top of one another and then that can fold into like a a couch like bench seat type of thing um, they'll be mobile that way I can still use this to haul things if I need to um, they'll pack out of the way whenever I'm you know traveling to hunt somewhere and then I can set everything up um, so still you know mobile enough lightweight enough that it's not too much of a pain um, but it wasn't kind of what I was envisioning the setup being so we're gonna do that and that'll 
create a little bit of a different layout than what I was intending, but I think it'll I think it'll work and ultimately I think it'll actually be more comfortable sleeping too, so kind of a win-win there. I'll just have to kind of reconfigure where I was going to put put a few things. So, like any project, was getting into it and then all of a sudden figured out that um, you know, what I thought I was going to do isn't necessarily what is going to end up 100% happening because I'm just having to kind of adjust based on, you know, what the what I'm what I'm dealing with. So, all right, day number two of the trailer build, conversion, whatever you want to call it. Um, cut a hole out in the floor. There was some water damage when I got everything up off. Um, I'm not exactly sure where it's coming from, but this trailer, I think, was made in 1996, so who knows. It's a, it seems like it's coming from the bottom, like the walls are fine. Um, so I feel like my grandpa, this is his trailer that I got, um, probably parked it at the farm with a bunch of grass and stuff kind of growing up around the back end of it, I imagine, and probably the uh, condensation and just the, the water from the from the grass getting tall up around it probably caused it because there's nothing really wrong with the walls. So I cut out a small piece of the floor. I'm going to replace that and then see what else we can get into today before the before the rain comes. For today, I'm going to drop in a Shure power line. Usually campsite power is 30 amp, but I'm going to do really kind of an easy update just to have consistent power when I need it. So it's a 15 amp kind of adapter that'll run inside the trailer and I'll be able to hook up, you know, um, power strip surge protectors, whatever the case is, to have a little bit more power when we do have, or when I do have, you know, a place where I can hook into to power that could power, you know, could run, you know, electric heat if I needed to or whatever the case is. Um, most of the devices are going to be charged and run off of the solar uh, generator that I put in this. Um, but if I am lucky enough and have some power that I can tap into, then I can use that, of course, and save the battery bank for when I might need it later. So it's just a little bit of supplemental power. They're really easy adapter to use. It has a, a cord that comes off the back end. You pilot a two-inch hole into the side of the trailer, seal it up, and then you plug in once you get to a campsite with power. And uh, pretty easy update, pretty cheap, and will give me consistent power on, on trips when I have it. Next step here is to go ahead and start putting the uh, insulation underneath the, uh, the undercarriage of the of the trailer to insulate the floor. I was originally going to put it over the top inside, um, but decided to stick it up underneath and then fasten it with some uh, with some Loctite caulk, and then take some Coroplast and tack that to the undercarriage to the frame. That way, if the um, that way if the, the insulation happens to drop down for whatever reason, that coroplast there will be to, there to, to, to hold it and it won't fall out of the road while I'm driving. Alright, so working on the trailer again today and uh, I didn't get a chance to film what I built yesterday, um, so I'll just give you a quick run through of what I did. I ended up figuring out what the bedding situation was going to be in here. I had to kind of figure that out first and where the heat was going to go before I could really do much more um, just because I'm working in such a tight space. I need to kind of make sure that I'm maximizing everything. So. What I ended up doing was building one loft bunk uh, for me because this trailer is like five, or I'm sorry, six feet wide. And then when you get the inter interior walls, you lose a little bit of space. So five, eight ish. So I built it wide enough to where I can kind of lay at an angle uh, and be comfortable and be able to stretch out. So I got that up off the ground, which gives me storage underneath of there. And then whenever I have a second person with me, I put up some E tracks and connected a hammock to that. Now, my bunk bed is also built on E tracks just with two by fours and a piece of plywood. I'll put a small, you know, some type of mattress or something soft up there to lay on to sleep. But this allowed me to have like the, the center of the, of the, um, of the trailer kind of open. Whenever we're not using the, uh, the hammock, it can just kind of fold back underneath my bed and then the entire center of the trailer, trailer is open. So got that stuff figured out. The next step is going to be to get the heater, uh, which should be coming in this week and then figure out where I'm going to run the solar generator. And once I kind of have that mapped out, I can start insulating the inside and uh, finish insulating the roof. I'll have to cut a vented uh, a hole in the roof to run the vent for the, uh, for the heater through. I'm gonna be using propane heat. Uh, I'm gonna use a Dickinson, uh, a small propane heater. They're mainly built for marine use, so boats, uh, in cabins of boats and so forth. So it'll put out plenty of heat for this small of a space uh, and should be you know, usable for a larger trailer if I ever decide to get something just a little bit bigger. So that's where we're at now. All right, so today I uh, didn't get as much done as I wanted to do. I had a trip to the hardware store, didn't have much of what I needed at all. 
So I really just got one panel of insulation put up today and then I put up a a cabinet um, that was the one thing that the hardware store did have. Um, I wanted a cabinet that goes above a refrigerator because they're usually a little thinner. And I wanted to kind of tack that to the wall that way I had some, you know, somewhere I can kind of stow some stuff, you know, with some um, with some doors on it and then also set it low enough to where I can use the top of the cabinet as a shelf as well. And that's probably what will be end up being the charging station because the power will come in there. Everything kind of sit on that shelf or inside the cabinet and get charged. Um, and then when it's not being used for that, you know, you can put, you know, wash or, you know, scent spray or whatever the case is in there to, to wherever you're going. So that's what we got done today. We'll get back at it probably next weekend, really at a standstill until the heater comes in and until um, the solar generator comes in. And then we should really make a lot of progress pretty quickly.